economy is not in perfect shape. So the best we could do is to get creative. And there are people all over Africa doing just that. So I'm going ghost to ghost to hear personal stories of people who beat their art, took advantage of technology to start their own successful businesses from ground up. Follow me on this journey. This is the startup show. Gaining admission to higher institution is one of the biggest challenges in Nigeria. So the startup show is proud to present Mrs. Bola Agumbiade, a woman providing solution to one of Nigeria's toughest challenges. Bola, who got bored at her media job, fortunately had a career switch when she got a job as a writer and counselor at an educational consulting agency where she acquired experiences in student counseling, admission placement, visa support and all-round educational guidance for candidates looking to secure admission overseas. After working for seven years, Bola decided to start Avail International Consult, an educational consulting firm experienced with student counseling on education in the UK, USA, Australia, and Malaysia programs. And now, our agency has helped over 100 students in different higher institutions across the globe. My name is Bola Bumbiade. Okay. Um, I own and run Avail International Consults by the grace of God, and this agency has existed since 2011. Before then, I was with another agency who also was doing the same kind of business, and I was there for seven years. And in 2011, I realized I needed to leave. I needed to start out on my own, and I started a very international consult. So here we are, five, five years down the line. Wow, five years is really uh, a long time. And you guys have been able to achieve much. We've been able to send uh, hundreds of students to the UK, US, Canada, and a few because um, we were going just UK, US, Canada before. But recently we realized that a lot of students were also interested in um, going to places like Europe and Asia. So we've completed that as well onto a kind of a place to send students to. Okay. So um, what is you guys' job really? What do you guys do? We we advise students from the graduate and prospective students, students who have just uh, finished their way and as well as secondary school students who want to school abroad. We give them uh, independent advice on career counseling. We assist them with the admission processing. Some students come in here, they're so confused, they don't know what to do. So we give them counseling. We are counselors, um, really. We ask them what they like to do. We look into their results and see exactly what they've been good at. If they're good in the sciences, or if they've been good in the art, or if they've been really good in the commercial. We look at all of these things and we also ask them questions about what they like to do. Do you like to swim? Are you creative? Do you like acting? Because we don't want to send you to school to do a course at the end of the day and then you realize that it's not what you really want to do. It's your parents. I tell parents, let me, I, I would like to speak with the students. If I speak with the students, I see what they have been at. The subject that they have excelled in, in the secondary school for, yeah, for these young ones. And then I advise them accordingly. It's really a dependent advice. It's not dependent on what the parents so I know the parents are the one paying, but I also, I also put the interest of the students you know, into consideration when we advise them. So we advise them on, on choosing their career. We assist them with getting their admission um, from these schools. We have partners in the UK. US, Canada, Europe as well, as well as Asia, that will sign contracts with, we have agreements with them, you know, so they, there are certain rules that we need to follow, so we don't just work, there are actual contracts, actual agreements that will sign with these schools, and the students have to come in, they, we need to see them, we need to look at their credentials, we need to see that these credentials are genuine, because we don't want to send students Know, over there abroad and they the image of Nigeria. So you do background checks. Exactly, one round background check on credentials, white certificates. I have uh, contact in white office. We, we check white certificates and we also ensure yeah, the references from schools are genuine, certificates from universities are genuine, transcripts are genuine. So we do all of all this. We also assist with visa counseling 
call the officer, advise you know, as a student if they need to go for an interview. We prepared them very well so that they, they are adequately prepared to answer whatever questions that the um, officers at the embassy will ask them. We don't stop at this stage, even after they get their visa, we assist them with uh, really partial briefing because you are going to a new country that you've never been to before, you don't know anything. Especially for the first time traveler, we assist with flight booking, assist with accommodation, reservation, airport pickup, and then um, even up to when they get to school, we do a quick follow up to ensure that they are doing well in school. We have um, checks and balances put in place to talk with these students when they are in school to ensure if they, if they like the school, if they like the courses, if they are having any problems. If they do, we have ways of speaking with the school on their behalf or speaking with their parents if it's a financial problem. So we help in all of these ways and we follow up on the stage that the students graduate in school. Some of them here, we present some of our students graduated. If you look on our Facebook page, you see some of them you know, we are graduation before, so we wow. celebrate with them and all of that. It's a joy for us. So we actually wow. follow up with them. A lot of them graduate, some of them still come. One of them called me, I think, two about two days ago, who just graduated from one of the university represents abroad and says, Oh, he's coming to see me. They say, Oh, you finished? I said, Yes. So it gives wow. us a lot of joy. So we actually follow up up to you know, when they finish school. Wow, it's a huge job you guys yes, are doing is. here. And um, it's, it's really amazing. I just thought that I feel what you guys do, oh, I, I need admission and I just cut foot into the school abroad or wherever it is and it stops there. But with what you've told me, it's a lot of job, it's a lot of work and it goes a lot of follow up to uh, the end process. Exactly. So if I want to study, um, uh, like start an undergraduate program, yes. what are the qualifications and certificates? I should have okay. before even stepping into the office. Okay. First of all, you need to have either your wife as West African International Council okay. of SSE O level as well, or you can have your NECO okay. National Examination Council or your GCE. Those are the three main ones for Nigerians. Some students have their A levels, advanced levels, who have done their O levels and they want to get in directly to okay. universities. Because most universities abroad do not accept a white directly into the university. You have to go through either a university or a foundation program. Okay. So basically, for those who have just their O level, it's white, NECO, or GCE, as well as the English test. Okay. So because most universities are asking for the English test now. Is it the TOEFL? Like? The TOEFL, IELTS, the one um, organized by British Council, um, Pearson. Uh, yes, person is becoming popular now. It wasn't popular a few years ago, but it's becoming more and more popular. Most schools are also accepting it. Um, I, I understand, I don't know if it's still the case, that TOEFL is no longer, the exam is no longer available in Nigeria. That maybe the centers were shut down or something. The centers were shut down because there was a widespread uh, exam and practice. Okay. Um, you need to go to Ghana, outside Nigeria, or so, to, to write. Wow. Yeah, but you know, the <laughs> so, so you, other alternatives are there for you too. Okay, so what are, uh, or have you ever had a student that was denied admission? And what are the causes? What, what are the kind of things that could make someone not to make it? Um, for instance, most schools have age restriction. Okay. So if, you, if you've left the secondary school for quite a while and you're okay. just thinking of going into school, maybe five or or six years down the line, you though you might have the academic qualification to go in, but they look at your records, they look at the gap. What have you been doing for the past five years? Okay. And you can't explain yeah. what you've been doing, or you've been doing nothing. You know, you can get refused the admission, even though you have five credits, which is what okay. is required. Then you to five have, credits, yes, that's only lower than our Nigerian schools because I think Nigerian schools say seven, eight, and really? you know about. <laughs> yeah, I think I just made inquiries for Unilab and they were like seven credits. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've already tried. I've already tried. Most of the countries ask for five credits. So, how did you venture into this business? Okay, I. Some years ago, I was in the middle health business as well, something like what you do. Okay. Although it was just it was the writing aspect. Yeah, I, was I remember. That's marketing mix. Marketing mix. Yeah. You know, I love writing actually. So, 
when I saw the opportunity to go into journalism, go into writing, you know, it was it was an easy opportunity for me because I had somebody who, who owned an organization, a family member actually, who owned an organization that does marketing things. So I just joined. Because you know, oh, I love writing and all of that. So, but if one or two years down the line, I realized it wasn't really what I wanted. You know, I started looking for other options. I actually left. You know, I left and then I was home for some months. It wasn't easy. Yeah, I had to leave. I hadn't gotten something else. People were asking me, have you gotten something? No. Like, are you, what is your problem? <laughs> exactly. Somebody actually used a problem to describe me then that when they asked me, I said, is everything okay? I said, of course, everything is okay. So, he used a proverb in your mouth to say, when um, a woman gives birth to, to, to twins and lost one of them, and you ask the mother, what, what, is everything okay? She said, oh, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Although she has lost one, but one is still alive. Let's actually use that proverb to, you know, to describe me. To say, she said everything is okay. You don't think everything is okay. She hasn't gotten another job. Yes, she's living one job. I realized it wasn't what I wanted. That's why I left. Funny enough, I got another job <laughs> three months later, but later. a month later, we were still in India. Wow. You know, because in Nigeria, once you have an experience in a particular yeah, field, yeah, they, they it's keep difficult. chasing you. It's difficult to leave and start something else. Yeah. I got another job again in the media industry to write for another magazine, um, Networks. Okay. It was actually in Ikoi. I was there for six months. Um, and then one of the marketers came in one day and said, Well, I didn't know I was in. I was in an education uh, recruitment industry to, uh, agency today in VI to market the magazine today. And the accountant says to me, and do you have access to anybody that can write well? She said, of course, Laura can write well, she works for networks. And I said, of course I can, which was an, which was which was going to be another writing the job. The writing again. job, yeah. <laughs> but I said, yes, I'm willing to, if I'm going to get more money, it was I'm going to mm -hmm. owe more money. You know, so I left for agents, another agency as well, mm -hmm. which was an international education recruiting firm, like what we do here. Okay. That was in 2011. I was supposed to be an editor to a magazine, an education magazine for them. But they said, oh, you, you get to write for us, as well as doing counseling. You can't just sit down and write, it's just a one, one, once a year magazine. You also do counseling for us. And so along the line, I was writing and I was also counseling students. And I realized that I loved what I was what doing. I, I love speaking to people, I love giving information, I love meeting new people. I just love helping people. And I said, I don't think I like this. And I wasn't doing the writing very well. And you know, the management complained that we said you were going to write. To write. And so, cancer, we, we seem to have abandoned the, the, writing, the writing part. Which was what we, you know, initially employed it for. You know, so along the line, the writing thing just got packed up. Fortunately, you know, lucky enough for me. It was packed up. We didn't get enough funding from the management. So they said, okay, we didn't want to do it anyway. So just going to full scale. Cancel. So I became a full scale counselor, maybe about six months um, into my job there. And I was there for seven years because wow. I didn't really love what I was doing. Seven years. Yeah. So in 2011, uh, after I spent seven years in March, I, I decided it was a gradual, I just, you know, was deciding I was deciding, okay, what I get the funding, I want to leave, I want to start out on my own, I think I've learned enough, I have enough knowledge, you know, and all of that. And, you know, March 2011, I resigned and I started here in April 2011. Wow. So, how has it been? You know, I will, um, you left your job. I'm very sure with the way you were explaining how the job was, it looked so exciting yes. and the pay was coming and then you, you left to come and start this place. So, how, how did you get your first client and how was starting off for you? Starting off for me, it, it wasn't so easy. It wasn't easy, I'll be honest about that. There was the issue of finance, and there was also that fear that... The fear most important. You know, that fear <laughs> that ah, you want to leave. I was any good money, actually. I was working... At that time, I'd gotten promoted to, you know, working for a specialized event, institution, West London College. So okay. I was a West London College Nigerian representative. Wow. So I was good, I was okay, and all of that. But I just felt it was time. You know, when it's time, it's time. Nobody's going to tell you it's time. You will realize within you that you just need to be your own boss. You just need to do your own thing. You just need to do your own way. Maybe the organization you are, there's certain things they do that you don't like. You need to develop some things on your own, some strategies on your own and all of that. So just realize 
there was a nudge in me that oh we need to move on. It was time for you to go so and then yeah, and I like Wow. Honestly, sometimes I, I want to uh, I, I want to go into you guys' art and just remove that thing that made you guys so strong to leave your job to start something because it it's I meet people every day who want to start something on their own, but they are so scared that uh, Roberta, you know, things are hard yeah. for you to leave oh, your job. Yeah. But, you know, there is nothing as getting the salary yeah. a lot every time on your phone. So I'm always so passionate about people like you who had good jobs that will leave their jobs to come and start something like this. And look at where we are now. Yeah. So what is the challenges of this business in Nigeria? Challenges are like what we call the exam of practice is affecting us a lot. Are you serious? Yeah. How, how does exams affect because, you guys? Because a lot of students are not able to defend the certificate that they are holding. Wow. Yeah. A student who has gotten maybe an A or a C in English. <laughs> and then you know, speak English and language. It, it, it's probably it, like me, it, that it, I assume. It, especially that English. It's a big problem. Yeah. And that's why most schools in Abra uh, right now are asking for you to write the English test. When you've gotten a credit in Y, what do you need to write the English, English test? test again? Because students cannot defend it. Because they get to school that they cannot hear what the lecturer is saying. Especially when they don't speak like us. <laughs> And you realize they don't speak like us. Well, but seriously, that, that, that can be a problem. Because I understand when I was in the media and and it was I joined a global firm and we have to get people from South Africa into conference calls. Yes. Honestly, you have to like yeah, say. Yes, it's, it's, it's right. <laughs> yeah. I understand that, but yeah. I have the right thing. Okay, no, the right thing. You know, know, you tell a student who has gotten a credit in English to write a statement of purpose. Why do you have to study computer science? A, an FS3 graduate. It cannot. It sounds you own. Is that not what we are paying you for? Are you kidding? Right? Yeah, can't you? Even graduates have told for us, asked us that question. You know, can you write it for us? There's a big problem, you know, that we, we are having. So that's the issue. That's the issue. So a lot cannot find the certificate that they are holding. And I think it all goes down to either exam as practice if... or corruption while they were in school. Exactly. All the facilities were not there, or they were not well taught. I think it's the exam of because, because because before you pass why why is one of the most difficult exams. Exactly. I think I, I had issues passing why than you passing all my all university exam. exams. Yes. So I think it has to but it boils down to my practice like you yes. say. Yes. So um considering uh, where we are now in the country, the state of things and the recent no forex for education. Yes. Are uh, your students affected and are you guys yeah, passing yeah, challenges? Yeah, yeah. Students are affected. Yeah. Um, we thank God that they lifted the, the rule that they made that no forex for students. There was a time they were saying no forex for students. Okay. They lifted that, so it's okay now. Oh, so I could buy I could buy the from CBN now for you could you could yes. Oh, students are in top priority now. Good news. This student they medical. Wow. So you could walk into a bank that you have a current account in Naira. <laughs> And then show them your admission letter. Okay. They give you a set of forms to fill, ask you for some documentation or credential certificate. Once you are able to produce that, they send you off to CPN. Wow. Once CPN approves, your money gets sent to school. Wow, I'm just getting a very fact. This is the most important and information no, I've gotten you get here. The, the good, where the bank rates. Exactly. Wow, that, that, that's good news. Yeah. That's good news. So, what are you guys looking up for in the future? What are the future plans? What we really want to be able to do is be able to help students. Some students come in here and I know they are really good. I mean really exceptional so I can tell you that. You look at their results and you see these ones are really good. You know what we don't have the financial muscle to be able to assist here. They're just looking for scholarships. They they don't have the money. Wow. But they want to study. Mm -hmm. they want to study abroad or even in Nigeria or even maybe somewhere like Ghana. Yeah. You know something somewhere where they can you know study well the environment where they can study well have access to if because if they can if a student can have 4.7 I have a student right now my exam I had a 4.7 from I think University of Abel if a student in Nigeria can have a 4.7 imagine what if you have when you are yeah. to travel honestly you know so that's one of the challenges and that's one of what we're looking at we were seriously hoping that we get you know and have the financial muscle, muscle support from, from NGOs, yeah, from government. NGOs and government, and individuals, philanthropists who are willing to help this student. Yes, yes. To, you know, so achieve, achieve those things. So, I mean, guys, because I believe they won't just come to you. 
have you guys been able to do events or do we need to start doing yeah. events that invite these people yeah. in to support yeah. outstanding students? We have been working on some yeah. very soon. We are going to blow them out. Blow them, so please. Really awareness. Yeah, we really need And when you guys are ready, let us know so we can create the attention because I believe if we put all those events in place with you guys' credentials, they will be sure and come in to help the students. Thank you very much. I am always inspired each time I meet an, an entrepreneur and a woman for that matter. I actually be women on the show. I know I've gotten a lot of Facebook um, messages attacking me that why don't you bring women on the show? I'm like, there are no more, uh, much women in, uh, in, in this. Are you serious? I'm, I'm going to look for them now. I'm going to become biased. <laughs> so if I have three, four requests, and one is a, a, a female, I'm going to go for that. So thank you very much for having us. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'm sure you've gotten all the information you need for your kids' school fee, for your sisters and siblings, or even yourself if you want to go start something. And um, you've heard it all, all the inspiration of starting and things like that. So if you're watching on, on YouTube, please kindly subscribe. If you're watching on our Facebook page, like or share. If you're watching on our web TV, kindly subscribe to our newsletter. Until next week when I will bring another exciting episode. Stay in charge and take care of yourself. Bye.